Oopla. Hey, look at it's another game that features more of these little creatures that we love or maybe sometimes hate. Hey, I like that one. Oh, there that that guy's um numbing. Holy crap. Ouch, this guy is gonna hit me. Get off my screen, you. This guy is a bro and welcome to this game. This is a let's play of Pokemon Stadium 2! I'm Mage Knight 404. Welcome! Alright, so this one is quite overdue actually. Oh, oh Pokemon Stadium, my LSP Pokemon Stadium was well received, and I was really looking forward to doing Stadium 2. I lacked one necessary component. A team that I could use. I wish I could use the rentals, but you know. But that was thankfully solved. I have a transfer pack now, thanks to one brilliant, brilliant, brilliant Englishman. His name is CalMC1234. He's got a YouTube channel, I will link it in the description. He's a bro, he's starting a Let's Play. He's Go watch him, he's a bro. Thanks, Cal, you're a bro. So anyway, Pokemon Stadium 2 is a huge step up from Pokemon Stadium 1. Pretty much capitalizing on what Stadium did right and fixing what was wrong. And adding to it. Not to mention there was capitalizing on Generation 2, which is even better. When I think of Pokemon battling, I think of this game. Colosseum and XD don't really count since their main focus was actually single player as opposed to multiplayer. Or not multiplayer, uh, battling. And Battle Revolution, it doesn't have it doesn't have anywhere near the charm of this game. Quite sad, really. So anyway, from the main menu we have White City, which is where everything happens. Battle Now is where we can pra have a practice fight. Event Battle where we can have events uh, battle with rules with two players. Options where we can set our options. And Mystery Gift where we can meet with Carrie, the Mystery Gift girl who appears in Generation Two. I have to get my I have to get a gift. I'll show that off. So anyway, this is White City. This is where all the main hubbaloo, hubbaloo will take place. As you can see, we've got several locations. The stadium is where all the tournaments will take place. The gym leader castle is where we can fight all the gym leaders of both Johto and Kanto. Pretty bro. The Pokemon Academy is where we can learn the basics of Pokemon, and even have practice battles to help you teach the basics. Um, pretty much a must if you want to do well in this game. Free battle lets you just have a fi fight for fun. Mini games lets you just unwind and have some mini games. And these will require these next three will require a transfer pack. The Game Boy Tower, which will let you play your game your Game Boy game on on an emulator in this game, which is pretty badass. They had to keep they had to keep that from the first game. Your room, which lets you decorate your room as in-game. And the Pokemon Lab, where Professor Oak is waiting for you. I can actually show this off. Welcome back! I suppose taking a tour of White City would, would help now that I actually have a transfer pack. So this is the Pokemon Lab. Stadium 1 had something similar, where you could put in your Game Boy pack and then just mess around with various things. This, P this PC will over here will let you organize your Pokémon and your items in the, in the lower list. You can give them items and whatnot, and you can even have them evolve, which something di Stadium 1 did not let you do. It's kind of weird. Pokemon, where you can move the Pokemon as, you, as they are and just swap them in and out. Messing with the boxes, your items, and your mail. A very nice feature that Stadium 2 has is that it has its own uh, item so storage, which was which can hold 200 items for both. And they have two different cases, one for red, blue, and yellow, and one for gold, silver, and crystal. So they can theoretically store a handful of up to 400 items for you, or different types of items, which is very nice. The 
This is the Pokédex. Pretty bro, let's you let you review your Pokédex in game. And this lets you trade with another player's transfer pack in game. Your room is a visual recreation of your actual room. Look at that manliness. Yes, I have a Clefairy poster. I am not ashamed. No, no ashamed for me. Look at this cute little guy. Diglett is a bro. Let's show off mystery gift. What's up, Carrie? This is very handy considering that not everyone could have a mystery gift from the second gen, so this game acted that as that, which was very cool. Okay, enough of random uh, stuff. Let's get round to brass tacks. This is how this LP is going to work. We will be doing the Pokemon Academy first, which will cover all the basics and the trainer battles in here. Then we will move on to the stadium, which we will be doing the Challenge Cup, Little Cup, Prime Cup, and Poke Cup in that order. Then we will have mini games. Then we will do the Gym Leader Castle, all of it. And then lastly, we will fight. Um. Never mind. You saw nothing. Okay, let's get down to business. This is Earl's Pokemon Academy, and this is Earl, that magnificent, ma magnificent, magnificent manly man. Look at that guy. The classroom will let you uh, have quizzes and pretty much get get all the basics down, which will pretty much get learn all you need to know, and then you can have battles and junk. And the library is a reference. The library will let you reference Pokemon items, moves, whatever. It was very comprehensive, especially especially during for its time, and it still is right now. You just need something to brush up on. In the classroom, the classes are divided into three groups: trainer class, gym leader class, and elite four class. And you need to pass them all in order to properly, you know, pass. This isn't mandatory to actually complete the game, but if you want to expand on the library, you have to clear it. The lectures will teach you all the basic rules of what you need to know depending on what class you're in. So the trainer class teaches you all the basic stuff. The gym leader class teaches you a little more advanced stuff. And the Elite Four class teaches you some pretty advanced stuff. You get through, you go through a lecture. Um, uh, I guess I might as well show up. Like, uh, say, uh, let's, just pick, let's just pick one. Just have problems. People, you go through, you read the lecture as your own, as you will. Mm-hmm. No, no. Very, very simple. And then at the end, you get to answer a question. In order to get through all the lectures, you have to read through all of them, and then answer a question, and then you pass the lecture. And then you have tests! Here's where you... Here's where you review all of your lectures, and then just fire it, and just fire it up in a quest that... in a test... quest... TEST! That features ten questions. And then you can move on to the battle, where you can test what you've learned in, in actual fighting. I will not be showing off the uh, lectures or tests in this LP, though I may show the lectures off in another video, separate from this Let's Play, if you want me to. I don't know. Just, I might as well do it just for show and semantics, whatever. Anyway, what I really came here for is to do the versus battles, where you learn every, where you put what you learned to the test against all the manly trainers you see here. 
the glorious thing in the stadium, too, is that the trainers talk to you! They talk smack! That means I can voice act! Yay! <laughs> Now, how this works is that, in order to properly pass, you need to use three specific Pokémon. The students are eager to try out what they've learned from Earl. The rules are simple. You will be provided with a team of Pokémon from which you will choose three correct Pokémon. Then you will battle. If you win with correct Pokémon, you'll get a gold star. If you win with other Pokémon, you'll get a flame. The battle is already underway when you start choosing Pokémon. You can't make intelligent choices if you don't know what kind of moves your Pokémon have. Do you know how to check moves? When you're choosing po battle Pokemon, hold down the R button when selecting. This will show you the moves to select a Pokemon. We knew, that we knew this from this first game, but this is very nice. Use this feature on your quest to get gold star every student. If you... You have to choose all three Pokemon that are correct if... You want the gold star. Choosing one wrong Pokemon will get you a flame. You can still win, though. But in order to actually pass, you need to gold star every trainer. And Earl will congratulate you if you actually manage to win with a perfect victory. Before the fight goes on, they give you they, before you actually have a fight, you can give you they give you a hint. Stop jumbling me, goddamn! But we're going to fight. This first match is really basic. It gets Camper Cole. Do you know the weaknesses of Grass type Pokemon? I do, actually! This is a very basic sort of thing. Where it just teaches you how, how uh, the weaknesses of Grass-type Pokémon. Which are... Flying, or are Fire, Flying, Bug, and Poison. What we wanted to pick here are Growlithe, Pidgeotto, and Beedrill. Of Earl's Pokemon Academy. The students begin battle with dreams of becoming respected Pokemon trainers. Oh, Ted Lewis, I've missed you. Let's have a warm up battle. And Ted Lewis's uh, acting in this game is much improved. So he actually does feel like we're a we're fight where he's, he's really showing his worth now. The shot. Not really overacting now. Nom, 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 nom. It's not very effective. So yeah, this is basically teaching you the ba the basics of grass of weaknesses and strengths and weaknesses of different types. For grass, we went over. Grass types are weak to fire, flying, bug, and poison types. Ow, critical hit. Flame wheel! Look at me, Mom! I'm on fire! I love Flame Wheel's animation in this game. It is so bad, badass. Ow! What you got, Cole? All right. They're both hanging tough. Raise relief, huh? He's gonna cut me! That didn't accomplish much. Critical plus moves like Raise Relief have been toned down in second generation. They're not they're not pretty much always guaranteed critical hits now. Considering that they ran off of the opponent's speed, I think. And their multiplier was like eight. Which is ridiculous. Now I think they've been toned down to like four now. And the formula has been changed automatically. I'm going to switch. Fuck you in your couch. Pidgeotto! Nail the weak spot. What's this? Well. Fuck you! How will this Pokemon switch affect the flow of battle? Oh, you're faster than me! Oh, uh, are you faster than Pidgeotto? Fuck off! Not very effective. 
Get out! Redundancy attack! Wing attack. Yes. Yeah, how do you that like is. it? Oh, and down it goes! Blah. Vigiero ain't down yet. What? What's up? Oh, it's perfect. Down to the last <laughs> okay, now you're just basically giving me this fight. Bye. Pokemon is three to one. Hey, look! Po hey, look, guys! This is Pokemon trying to be intimidating. No. That struck home. Take a shot at Giga Drain. Oh, what you at? Uh, 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 wait. No! No, 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 no! 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 Fuck! Right! Off! You! Bastard! And there's the first battle! Glorious! Than me! No shit, bro. Wow, you really know how to exploit the weaknesses of grass type Pokemon. Decisive victory! Let's move on. To Super Nerd Melvin. Effective moves against fire type Pokemon? I can't tell you that. This one's a little more subtle. It's still about weaknesses, though they're not. Though you do not have the right Pokémon to be countering Fire-type Pokémon, as more obvious larger questions would be like using Water or Rock-type Pokémon or something like that. No, this is actually depending on the Pokémon's move set provided. Just because a Pokémon is not of that type doesn't mean that they can learn a move that can counter that type. What well, we want to pick here are Miltank, Furret, and Stantler. This is the battle between the students of Earl's Pokémon Academy. The students begin battle with dreams of becoming respected Pokémon trainers. Start the experiment. So yes. Miltank, use your custom rollout anima animation! No, sadly not the one from the anime, which I liked. 30 power. No way, we just started this. Sup? What a- What's this? 60 base power. Sparks of flying from both competitors. Sup and roll. What's that? Right. 120 base power, and that's critical, so it's double and double that, cause uh, I fried my circuits. We're eagerly awaiting the appearance of the next Pokemon. Oh, it's Arcanine. And that brings out Arcanine. You faster than me, bro? Nope. Sorry, I guess you're dead. What a oh crap! I missed. That didn't connect. What that? The hit plants right off. Huh? I was gonna go for a clean sweep. I want to switch now. I'll leave myself open. Sorry, Mill Tank, you're gonna have to take one for the team! Pretty base power. No, Mill Tank! Curses! That tail will bring out a new Pokemon! Oh, it's Stantler! Hey! This looks like a job for Super Moof! Antler action! There's the shot! Oh, nature damage! 
Yeah, get out. Okay, so recapping the hit, the lesson here. Just because the Pokemon doesn't necessarily belong to the type that they're, they're weak to, that the opponent is weak to, just be, doesn't mean that they can learn a move that can counter it. Which is a big, which is a big, uh, big part of competitive battling when it comes to using Sweeper Pokemon. Now I'm playing with Fire. Dude, you got a Flareon. I ain't scared of you. Flareon hasn't been relevant since, like, ever. Get out. That's lesson for today. Christ, he looks pissed. Dude, brush your hair. Was there a tightness advantage? A chemical reaction might affect my team. Okay. I finally know the weak points of fire Pokemon, but now I'm all burnt out from studying. Fizzle. Very good. Let's duel Schoolboy Carson. He's next. What are you looking at? The battle is weighed for three Pokémon per side. Here's where you must be choosing Pokémon with multiple weaknesses and having to combat with multiple strengths. All glorious and whatnot. But now, what we want to pick here are Hitmonlee, Magmar, and Blossom. Because most of these guys are. The battle between the students of Earl's Pokemon Academy. The students begin battle with Rock, Steel, or Ground, and Dark. Initiate action! Him only can take most of them because it has jump kick. Oh god, magnitude. Four. That is the lamest magnitude you can do. For those of you who don't know what magnitude, how magnitude works, magnitude is a ground type attack that has varying power based on magnitude levels four through ten. Oh what? Going up in the world. Magnitude 4 is 10 base power, Magnitude 5 is 30 base power, 6 is 50, 7 is 7, 70, 8 is 90, 9 is 110, and 10 is 150. What? What do you mean? I mean, that's how Magnitude works, kid. We can be stronger than Earthquake, though. Earthquake is much more practical. So. It has to be Steelix! It has to be- I'm switching out my Pokémon now, okay, thanks. Yeah, him only can take on Steelix, but Steelix has an innately high defense, so fuck that. Oh, it's Magma. Magma. Last shot with your Iron Tail! Miss. I know the perfect counter to Iron Tail problems, and that is how we can go sing of FIRE PUNCH! Iron Tail is right powerful, but it is inaccurate. Excuse me. Although, if you want to steal attack... Gen 2, there weren't many good steal attacks out yet. Considering that we're still experimenting with steel and dark type. It has to be, you're going to get punched in the face humiliatively. I can swap back to him only and totally mess you up. Oh, no, it's me attack, ow! 
Oh no, what am I going to do? With Sneasel and it's hilarious to little special attack, you know. Help! Help! It burns! Dems the brakes, kid. Get out. Uh, it looks dejected. Fuck. Mm. Ah! What are we gonna tell my friends? Tell your friends that you lost in a practice battle. This isn't good. I never imagined there could be someone who knew so much about tight matchups. Thank you, Earl.